Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for April 20th, not April, August 20th, 2019. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. Of course, it's my show. This season, for Dog Days of Podcasting, we are covering amateur radio and going through the technician manual of which you can find on my website at mike at mikewills.me. A link to buy it anyway. So today we are talking about chapter 7.3, international rules. Many times when you meet people, you know, especially us podcasters, we are meeting multiple people. You know, we have people from Canada. We probably have met people from other countries, especially, you know, probably more particularly more English talking countries, but probably some other ones as well. However, you don't get, you may or may not get that exposure to, well, essentially complete random strangers. And where in radio, especially if you get into the HF area, probably not so much unless you navigate some of the uh, digital areas of um, VHF, UHF, you know, on HF, the the signal doesn't have no borders. The only border for HF radio is the ionosphere that it bounces off of. Beyond that, you don't know where the signals are going to land. And with that, there are certain international rules that you need to follow. So the first thing that they talk about here is the ITU is an administrative forum for working out international telecommunications treaties and laws, including uh, including frequency allocations. The IT the ITU also maintains international radio laws that all UN countries agree agree to abide by. So. Um, what they have done is they divided into three regions, like I mentioned, I believe yesterday. Uh, so region one is really, um, well, I'll just call it Russia and kind of that Russia area all the way down to Africa. That is region one. Region two is really the Americas, North America, South America. I think Greenland's in there, it looks like. So that's region two. And then region three is kind of the China, um, Middle East sort of, uh, and then all the way down to um, Australia, duh. And I honestly, I don't know quite where um, Antarctica would fall or if it's in all three, but Antarctica technically would be in there too. So... um, it, the book talks a little bit more about that. Um, the ITU is International Telecommunications Union. And that is uh, one of the questions that is in the book. <clears throat> or one of the questions that could be up here in the test. So um, with this, um, what they want to make sure you do is you are... Um, that you're uh, doing permitted contacts and communications. Basically what this section is saying here is that there are some countries that you are just outright not allowed to talk to. Um, I don't want to pick on any particular country because I truly don't know. So let's pick something le- less obvious that it's not, that it is allowed. But so let's just say for whatever reason, we are no longer allowed to talk to England. We are, but yeah, you know, we, we actually can, but let's just say you are, we are not allowed to talk to England for whatever reason. 
I don't want to pick an edge case just in case I'm wrong. Um, so at that particular point, if you were answering a call, you first probably need to look to make sure that they're not from England before you answer them. Otherwise, you could be doing something potentially even illegal. Um, the other side of it is, um, you know, if someone answers your call, I, I, you know, and honestly, I don't know what you would say, do say per se, but I would hope that you would uh, just kind of, you know, if it's a pileup situation, you just don't answer the call. Or if you do answer their call, say, sorry, I can't talk to you. And then just end it there. I'm, I'm not sure. I guess I would be polite about it ultimately. And then the other thing that they're talking about here is international operating. So through these treaties and laws, you are allowed to operate in other countries. However, some countries will require you to apply or do certain things. Um, supposedly from what I, I read that, um, in other areas, if you have an, uh, amateur extra license, it's much easier process, but then you have countries, let's say like Canada, where Canada and the U S have an operating agreement. So at that point, as long as you're licensed and probably can prove it, you are allowed to communicate within Canada. They ask that you add an additional sign onto your call using the location code where you're in. So um, I'll talk about the call signs in one second here. But to finish up the Canada story, when I was up there earlier this year, I discovered that um, Ontario was uh, between two different uh, sets of call letters, but I chose to use VE3. Uh, so Victor Echo 3, and ultimately I didn't actually broadcast, and part of, part of it being chicken, part of it being, well, I wasn't hearing a repeater, so I didn't want to risk it, and I just said, ah, screw it. But I could have call, put my call sign out there, which uh, for now, now it would, have, it would be WX0MIK slash VE3. And then you could uh, proceed that with your approximate location as well. So those were kind of the only two conditions regarding operating in Canada, which is kind of neat. And I believe I've seen other countries as well where you have those things, but I could go up and visit um, in Caffeinated One and uh, do ham radio from his area because I'd be perfectly allowed. I would just need to figure out what area he's in in Canada and then call, do the call sign there. So rolling on to talking about call signs, that's actually chapter 7.4. And we're just going to kind of knock out both of these here. Prefixes and suffixes. A call sign is very structured in how it does things. Um, thing, um, pr what you really have is you have w usually one or two characters first and then you have some sort of a number and then you can have up to three one to three characters after so i have quote the max <laughs> so to speak so i am wx which is the prefix zero is actually what they call it the call district so i'm in call district 10 technically and then um M I K it was the, the the suffix. So when they talk about in US here, in the US the amateur call prefix consists of one or two one or two letters and one numeral. The suffix contains one to three letters. For example, W three A B C is a valid US amateur call sign, while K D K A and K M A three five O five are call signs from other US radio services. So each um, country is assigned one, at least one unique block of prefixes. So U.S. has any call sign that begins with a K, an N, and a W. Or the two-letter combination of AA through AL. Uh, no matter what, if you hear call sign begin with those letters, they are U.S. Um, I was going to say U.S. certified. 
U.S. licensed. Um, most Canadians use VA through VG. French use F. Japanese uses J. Uh, Singapore calls begin with a nine. So that's another scenario is you can have begin with an, a number and then a letter, and then it would have to have another number again. So if, from what I understand, this is oh, right here. The combination of a prefix and suffix uniquely identify a station anywhere on Earth. Within a country, the call signs can be assigned to indicate license class or location or other special characteristics. So in the U.S., things are divided up into these different districts. So California is a bunch of lucky people who have their own call district. They are call district six. I am in call district 10, um, but technically zero. And uh, so that's include Minnesota, the Dakotas, North, uh, kind of the um, what you would call your uh, Midwest, upper Midwest. And including Colorado. Uh, and then you kind of have the um, the Midwest South, South Midwest. I guess I, I don't have never called it that. But uh, that is five. And it kind of goes around from there. Uh, if you're from Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, you're a nine. So I think if I remember right, at one time they split a couple of these up because they started running out of letters and then... Redivided everything up. So, um, what the book talks about and what is actuality are kind of two different things now. I think this was how it was originally designed, but there's definitely extra. Uh, well, I'll I'll cover that in a second here. So, what they have is four groups. They have Group A, which is amateur extra usually is a, pre a prefix of K, N, or W with two-letter suffix. So they call it a one-by-two. Or you can have a two-by-one. For, let's use my call sign, it could, uh, uh, WX0M would be one option. Or you could have W0MI, or M MW, let's just say MW. So that would be kind of, the, the really short ones are usually reserved for amateur extras. And then you have the advanced uh, group, and that's the one that isn't really used anymore. That's when you have the two by two. So you could have WX, zero, MW, and that would be an advanced class. Um, then general is usually a one by three. So you would have W, zero, MIK, and then that would be considered a general. However, a lot of people, and I was assigned a, a this as well, a lot of people seem to have a two by three. Um, so I do know some like K2, KLN, he is, uh, I think he's actually a general too. Um, but then a lot of people have been meeting their generals or even am amateur extras that have a two by three. And so that seems to be the most common. So that, that then that's when you get WX zero M I K, and that's considered a two by three. So when this you kind of go through the book, they make it sound like all amateur extras have a one by two or a two by or a, a two by one. All generals have a one by three, and all technicians have a two by three. In practice, is not really true, and. In some cases, you know, obviously I got my call letters with the general. I still got a one by three. Um, if you start with a technician, you're more likely to get the two by three. And then if you've been using it, a lot of people just want to keep it. So, yeah, even this one guy who's, I don't know how long he's been here. He's kept his K2 because he wanted to keep his K his two his call sign, probably because he used it. Um, then they talk about here, um, the last piece in here is choosing a call sign. So like I did, if you, whether you like it or, you know, if you just want a custom one totally, you can, uh, request a vanity call sign. Or if you just say, I don't like it, 
Uh, maybe you should have one of those call signs that every single letter could sound like something else. It's just uh, hard to spit out. Then you can just um, ask, request a vanity call sign. It usually takes around 15, 18 days to get approved, and then you get that. The only other thing they mention in a little sidebar here is that um, you'll notice right away that hams from the 0 or 10th district write their calls with the forward slash 0. So to eliminate confusion between O's and zeros. Um, they usually do a slash zero in their call call sign. Uh, sometimes it causes problems, but generally that's what people do. Although most of the time I've been seeing it with just the, the number zero because computers and typing and yeah. So um, that wraps up chapter seven and in our talk about how to what was this about how to uh, communicate with no that was not that was this one licensing and regulations this kind of talks about that um in is that also in here i thought it was in here they do talk about that there's an acceptable list of i thought it was in this book too but i know in the general book they talk about a little bit more about international communications and st- countries you are allowed to talk to and others that you're not allowed to and there's a way and where to go look that up so when you start doing this communications especially these when the propagation is good you might want to look at you know keep that list up to date just to make sure you're not calling someone who you're not allowed to um i believe yes operating regulations i think is one of are talking about other areas of communication so we will talk about that tomorrow so until then thank you so much for listening and uh this one's getting out there a little late but we'll get the sucker out there so um 73 from wx0 mik that frequency is it clear yeah i think it's clear now So I want to add a little sidebar here. Um, So if you're still listening, hey, awesome. So over the weekend, I created, uh, what do you call a Slim Jim antenna made out of copper pipe. In fact, I think I may have talked about this last one. So I was um, finally able to test it out here, actually today. And short of some little connection problems, maybe in the coax or the adapter or whatever i it actually worked so i'm kind of excited actually it's kind of cool who'd have thought that you could actually create your own antennas and actually make them work so i mean uh one of the next steps I need to do is actually get a uh, me- SWR meter. We'll talk about those. Uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of t- talked about pre- before, but towards the end here, I'm going to talk about some of the equipment that you should th- consider getting before you get too deep into it. Um, and um, so once I get this SWR meter, then I can make sure it's sitting really close to where it needs to be. Um, and then I will be... Uh, pl- planning on putting it up so yeah i was like i uh talked to someone from st peter's on the little local repeater so he's like yeah you know you know you could just you know use your little handheld and make it work it's like yeah i know and i know it works but the point is i want to be i'm in a tin can because my house is steel siding i want to make sure i can communicate so He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, I get that. And then, like, St. Peter, which isn't far from my house, but it's, I still can't communicate through it, at least through my house. I can join in those nets and that kind of stuff, hopefully. So, you know, I'm, I got a little jazz today when I actually got it to work. So, um, yeah, so that's, I just went to add this little sidebar and, yeah, you know, if you listen to it, awesome, thanks. So uh seventy three again from WX zero MIK and uh the frequency is now actually clear. Bye. The frequency is clear.
WX0MIK73.